All right, thanks everybody for coming out. Can you guys hear me okay back there? Okay, good deal. Um, so the this talk, like I said, what to do when something bad has happened. And uh, a lot of this was driven by things I've observed during penetration tests when uh, the ops team is starting to try and uh, troubleshoot what we're doing and, and figure out how to keep us from getting access to systems. And, and it, it, it gets into be kind of interesting to see how that uh, can play out into things. Um, you already heard a little bit about me. I, I'm a pen tester for secure ideas. Um, it's what we do day in, day out, pretty much. Uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a sysadmin by, by trade. That's my background, Linux and Windows, infrastructure roles. Uh, a lot of time spent in that. It's just keeping things running in, in the underlying systems. I do a lot of volunteer work, uh, mostly with, with kids, teenagers, uh, between Scouts and Cyber Patriot, which is a great program to get involved in uh, for, for teaching kids computer security, uh, as well as Civil Air Patrol. So those are all things that I spend my time doing, which has grown to be quite a bit of time uh, recently. So as I was thinking about this, how do we find out that something's gone wrong? Who here has warned the phone or the pager? Yeah. Um, you're sitting there, you're doing your thing, usually at an inconvenient time. You've got uh, family around or whatever. You're, you're doing uh, something else where you're away from a keyboard finally and your phone starts ringing and you get pulled back into work. Now, hopefully, when your phone rings, these guys aren't the ones on the phone telling you that you have a problem. Um, I have some friends who have gotten those phone calls, you know, where the Secret Service is, is doing their investigation and, hey, we, uh, we found some of your data on this server that we're checking out. We think you might have an issue. Um, sometimes you're going to get these phone calls. Somebody in the organization is calling you, oh my gosh, I think I'm hacked. I'm going, what do I do? And they're panicking and they're freaking out. And uh, the, usually when I got those phone calls where people said, I think I'm hacked, unless they had things really popping up all over their system, which that happens, um, I found that it was something else a lot. Um, but, you know, sometimes you're, you're gonna, somebody's going to see something and they think, yeah, we've, we've got a real problem here. Um, most of the time, when I've been pulled into things, something just looks off about this. Uh, server's acting a little strange or something like that. They're not sure what's going on. And say, so hey, you, know, so you get called in for troubleshooting. And you start looking at it and you realize, hey, uh, maybe, maybe something else is, is occurring. So, what I want to talk about is what we're going to dive into when we get these phone calls or when we get this asked to go check something out, how do we do so in a way that prevents us from shooting ourselves in the foot? And the first thing that um, I see people do when, this, when they think something's wrong, they start to panic. Oh my gosh, we've, I've got a problem. We've been, we've been, I'm going to get fired or whatever it is. Um, and so they get really upset and they get rattled. And when we get rattled, we start making even more mistakes. Um, so I always say, you know, just don't panic. Um, some thoughts that we may have, you know, here is, you know, who should I call? Should I call my boss now? What do I tell him if I do? Right? Um, hey, I think we had an incident response document. Where is that? That might be handy right now. Um, and then the last one here, you get some folks that, you know, they take this as a, you know, they get all belligerent. They're going to show this guy and they're going to mess back with the hacker or whatever. That's where I got our bull in the china shop here, you know, running around generally causing havoc as they're, they're fighting back. So rule number one, when you get called in to check out something that may be security related, don't log in as domain admin. Um, we'll get to this a little bit later, but you know, sometimes in pen tests we'll make a little bit of noise on the network so that somebody with elevated credentials to the domain actually logs in. We want them to notice us. Um, so 
use the permissions you need. Something with maybe local administrative rights that you need for just right here, but it's not gonna spread laterally. Not gonna be able to turn around and pop other systems, elevate my privileges. Um, the attacker starts moving around to other systems, we're gonna have a really, really bad day uh, at a bare minimum. You're gonna spend a lot of time now chasing around to different systems. Um, most of the time though when I've seen this is people didn't even notice we were there and as they're, they're looking at that, uh, at the systems themselves. But uh, you know, a lot of times our goal is like get hashes, get credentials, whatever it is, so that we can move on to the other system. I'm on a relatively uninteresting box, but uh, if I can get somebody here, then that's, that would be pretty cool. Rule number two, who remembers this gentleman uh, from the Iraq war? Um, he got up there all the time saying how nothing was wrong. They were beating the pants out of the U.S. And um, that just wasn't happening. So who's here had somebody where they look at, you find out later, they've had some kind of incident. They know something's wrong. They don't want to tell anybody. And so if anybody asks them, this is what you get from them. Um, one place that I worked, actually we had... Um, we had a group that had their own server room off to the side, and it was separate from all of the rest of IT operations and systems administration. And their job was to go out and download data um, from various sources uh, that would then be processed and uploaded to databases. And they had a large number of systems doing that, and they got infected with um, some of the more fun viruses of the early 2000s, and they said nothing for two days. And then when we find out, it was when it finally spread from their environment into ours. And you know, when we had 30 systems to deal with, we didn't know about it. When we had 500 systems to deal with, that's when they finally admitted, oh, yeah, we didn't want to say anything about that. Um, so be willing to, to communicate and let people know. Ask questions, because sometimes, um, particularly you know, during some kind of incident, somebody else may have some information that, that'll help you out. Um, you can get a second set of hands to go check out other systems, whatever. So some things that you, we, I guess we do during pen tests and folks would want to look at. Uh, what are they checking for when they get on the box? Okay, we've had some alerts. Um, what is it that I'm even trying to see? And this is something I talk about to my Cyber Patriot kids a lot, as they're looking at systems that have been, um, you know, purposely, they're looking at virtual machines that have backdoors in them and malware running and stuff like that, and they're supposed to try and figure out where it is. Um, I start saying, well, you know, what do you normally see on a Windows box? What do you normally see on a Linux box? What looks unusual to you? Now, to them, that's hard, right? They don't, they're high school kids or even middle school kids. They don't have lots of time doing systems administration and, and seeing what the systems normally should be. Um, I found that, you know, as a sysadmin, you just kind of get a feel for what's supposed to be there and what's not. Uh, which is not to say that I necessarily spotted everything that happened, but, you know, that's, that's kind of things we're looking for. Any kind of new changes users that are cropping up all of a sudden, you'd think that would be obvious, but uh, sometimes that, that doesn't uh, get people's attention. Any kind of changes from our normal behavior. Um, is it normal for Jason to log into the server via SSH? Yeah, he does that all the time. Is it normal for him to do it at 4.30 in the morning? Okay, Jason Street will get up at 4.30. I won't. <laughs> if it was one or two o'clock in the morning, maybe me, but by that time I'll, I'm out cold and you won't see me till 10. Um, but, you know, if somebody's logging in at 4.30 in the morning, uh, that might be an issue. Now maybe I got a phone call and I've had to log in to troubleshoot something and so that you ask some questions and you find out, okay, yeah, that was, that was legit, right? But other times we see login activity that's out of, out of normal hours. Uh, or changes, transfers going on that shouldn't be happening. Um, you know, wait, we don't have this job running at that point. What's going on? 
uh, any kind of signs that someone is or was connected to that system. You know, it is, it, I'm out here looking at this thing. Is there anybody even logged into it in the first place? And you would think uh, that that would be kind of uh, something I would look for right away. But other folks, you know, in our experience, we, we've been on boxes and um, we're spending time hanging out there, having a grand old time pillaging data and whatnot. And we know the sysadmin is actually, actually logged into the, the box looking for some noise that we had caused. And an hour later, they log off and we're still here. Um, not, not something that uh, you want to find out about after the fact. So, unusual network connections. Uh, and I, I've, sometimes I'm this obvious with my Cyber Patriot kids when I'm doing demos with them and trying to get them to practice and see some of this stuff. And, you know, what looks odd here? Well, we've got some connection on port 4444 out there, and it's running under process ID, what is that, 3532. Well, maybe we should go look and see what that is. So this is just netstat-naao, right? Get the PID, now I'm gonna go look at task manager or task list and see, okay, what is running on that, that process ID? Well, Kind of unusual for run DLL32 to be logged into or connected to some other system over the network randomly. So that's a problem. In this case, you're just looking at a, uh, I've got Meterpreter up on this, this Windows box and I'm connected to it and, and this is what it looks like from the other side. Anything odd like that? Uh, why is a server talking to this other server over here? Um, I don't recall running that service listening on the network on you know, port 1337 or something like that. Um, whatever. RDP sessions. So a while ago we did a pen test, uh, it was actually last summer, where we um, found this vulnerable Java web app server. Fantastic. We deployed our war file to it and somebody had installed Tomcat with the default installer. Next, 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 next. Do I want to install it as a local system? Absolutely, because I don't want to go get a service account. Next, 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 next. And now we're system on this, this Windows box. Great, we've got full control of it. We created a user account. Um, we decided to be really subtle. We created a user account from the command line. We added it to the local administrators group. Now we only have permission to our one box here. And uh, you know, we didn't have any domain permissions at this point, but um, and we just logged in via RDP. And we're poking around the box and, you know, looking at database connection files so that we could potentially get into other systems and, and whatnot. And um, one of the problems we had is that we didn't, we, we could, we, there weren't any credentials cached. We didn't find any hashes that were cached there, nothing that was gonna allow us to see to get out around to the other systems. And so we're like, well, hmm. So we started causing some noise on this box. When the sysadmin finally logged in, like I said, he sat there poking around on the system for a while, investigating the alerts that we caused, and never noticed that we were connected via RDP. And here I've got Dr. Evil logged in. Um, okay, we didn't use Dr. Evil. We used a username called Secure Ideas, which is kind of unusual for this environment. Um, but he never looked. He never saw that we were there. We stayed logged into that machine for a couple of days uh, before we disconnected on our own. So some things to, to look at here. I mean, you can always go in and open up the MMC and say, okay, you know, go to terminal services and see who is, who's tied up on this box. Is anybody connected at all? Quick, easy way to do it though, that's kind of a hassle to, to open up that MMC sometimes. It takes a while. Just open up the command line, query session, hit enter. And here you go, we see who's logged in at the console, in this case I am, and Dr. Evil over RDP. This is a sure sign right here that okay, now we've got a real problem. If we've done this right, we're again, not a domain admin, we've, we've got limited permissions, enough permissions to maybe the local administrator account or whatever, but we can query this information without uh, granting that access sideways throughout the environment. 
You're also going to want to look at things like, hey, are, is anybody connected to this thing over the network? Got a NetBIOS connection to it or something like that. Run that session real quick. See who's talking, you know, what open shares or files we have going on. That may give us some information as well. I debated putting this one in here because it's kind of obvious. We're on a Linux box. Something unusual is going on. It's kind of normal to just run who. Who else is here? Um, as well as the net stats and all that other stuff that I showed you that we, we talked about a little bit on our Windows box. Um, but again, we hear of folks who never notice that. They're poking around a system or they're not even looking for things, but they've never noticed that, hey, somebody else has logged into this system and I don't know who Gomer is or why he's connected to my box. Maybe that's something I want to go check out. Uh, when, when we see something like that, you know, all right, we've noticed that Gomer is here. When did he show up? Well, in this case, Gomer, Gomer showed up last night at 10 o'clock because I was still working on my presentation at that point. Um, that gives me some time to start, you know, time range right there to start looking around and seeing, okay, what changed around that time? What other things have occurred here around this time that might be of interest to me? Give me some idea of what this person's maybe looked at or done or, or, or tried to do. Uh, something to comb through logs on. Start looking through our Windows logs for specific events. Now, I just went ahead, I started to hunt around for all of the event IDs and then I found this fantastic page here on Lenny Zeltzer's website, seltzer.com slash incident dash response, log dash review dash checklist. Um, and I went, well shoot, why am I gonna copy it out of there and put it into my slides? He's already done all this work. Let's just give him credit for it. He's got a lot of great stuff on here, just little checklists and stuff like that to, to prompt you to think of things. Have I done this? Have I done this? Oh, I didn't, I didn't check that. Um, in my case, I was looking at, okay, what are the login, login event, off events that I'm looking for on Windows Box? So we've got, you know, event IDs 528, 540 for successful logins, failed logins, 529 through 537, 539, 38, 50, uh, 551, et cetera, for log off. Um, any kind of changes to a user ID? These are all things that we're going to want to, to take a look at. When did it get here? Did they change somebody else's permissions? Have they changed the password on this box? Have we put it into a different group? Uh, elevated our, our access rights to the system by being able to do that. Uh, services being stopped or started could be really important. Uh, so for example, I'll get on a system and I'm looking around and I'm wanting to upload some tools to this thing to see what I can do. And oh, doggone it, they've got some antivirus and I haven't done anything to obscure this particular app and it's getting caught. Oh wait, I'm running a system. Net stop semantic. Fabulous. Now I have no AV, I can do what I want. Just the fact that, that service went down ought to you know, raise some screaming red flags to everybody that somebody, you know, there's shenanigans going on here. Uh, so we want to keep an eye out for these type of events. Go through these logs and see, you know, which of these events show up. Script it out. Have some scripts written out. One of the things that we use internally as secure ideas is we write scripts and we find that they're useful, be it for systems administration, for internal boxes or pen tests or whatever. We check them into subversion repository. You know, I write up a useful little Python script for something or other. Boom, it goes into source control. Makes it nice and easy because everybody knows here's where you go to look for this stuff. So if I want to see if, you know, where did I put that script at? That's where it is. Um, and all the different, various different versions of it. Linux systems, uh, you know, logs are, we're not looking at event IDs necessarily, but if we're looking for things going on with users and authentication and changes to users, authlog is our friend. And I just did a couple of Simple little searches through here where, okay, uh, when did somebody log in via SSH? So I'm just going to search off log for SSHD, see what shows up. Um, you can do it for the console. Now, in this case, I searched for GDM. It was a GNOME system. Um, 
you pick your Windows manager at that point, but uh, that's actually on the box. But search around through that. You might need to do some additional filtering, like in this case I tossed in looking for sessions specifically to cut out some noise. Um, and then look for any activity where somebody's SUing or using sudo. Um, this morning I actually noticed I messed up on this one a little bit because that command is kind of redundant because I'm looking for sudo or su and su will just find it. However, initially I had a space after that su to look for just su events, which is why I had it in there. But uh, this, like I said, today I was looking at it and I was like, oh, oops, whatever. <laughs> Um, but here's some examples of the data that we get out of this. And you may get some stuff that, okay, I need to ignore invalid user support uh, in this particular case. But I certainly want to see things like, um, you know, me SUing a couple of times here um, on this box. Take some more looking at authlog. You get a message saying that there's a new user. so. That's something nice and generic. I don't really know what I'm looking for. I just want to see, you know, if something got logged about a new user being created. So you grab for new user. Oh, we've got a username. Gomer has showed up at this point. All right, well, now I have something else to search for. Let's see what else Gomer has done. And now I actually start getting a history of what's gone on. Uh, we see the account being created. Uh, we see him log in via SSH. And I added Gomer to the sudo group which on an Ubuntu system gives us the ability to run sudo as root. So, uh, but I've got a nice little timeline here on some things that have gone on. One of the things we talk about with our clients an awful lot, okay, you did this stuff. How do we even know that you were there? Uh, this, this is actually a little bit more on the lead into having an incident. Um, Stop and think about it. Some, some of these sensitive changes that we've talked about, how often should they really occur? Um, does somebody show up in the domain, get added to the domain admin group day in, day out? <laughs> they do in your environment? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it shouldn't happen very often. New users shouldn't be created except for when there's a new, new employee that's come on. So we want to look at that. And, you know, when did they, uh, people get added into different groups or files, the sudoers file or the sudo group. When should that happen? It shouldn't happen very often and we should be watching for that. We should be monitoring and looking for that so that, uh, again, as soon as this happens, something should scream. And I may be able to say, yeah, I just did that, that's fine. That was part of an authorized change or not. This is something that as a sysadmin, I knew it was there. You can add exceptions to antivirus. This is really cool when you pop a box and you want to upload your tools. You just add an exception to AV. So you're going to want to look for that, any sign of an exception showing up where it ought to be. It's even better when you pop a system and they've already added the exceptions for you to see colon temp. So I don't even have to do anything. I just copy my stuff in. All right, we talked about services going down, but we do want to know, hey, who did that? Why did it happen? Was it graceful or did it crash? Or what went on around that? All right, here's the thing with some of these, you know, the idea, uh, some of these mistakes that we can make. There's not many, there's not much room for a do-over, right? We're not gonna hop on our time machine and stop ourselves from going and being stupid. Uh, so we do need to do some preparation. Um, it's, it's much too late when we're already bleeding. So some things to kink, think of, you know, have your tools ready, have that subversion or Git or whatever your repository of choice is. Have somewhere where your tools are hanging out at. Have it deployed to DVDs or USB drives so you can use them uh, without installing them onto the, the target system. We can just run them from right there. Um, have some resources on hand. One of the things I ran across recently is the Blue Team Handbook. Windows and Linux, it's not in depth, it's not a big thick tome on, on incident response or anything like that, but it has a lot of references to commands and how to do things and stuff like that. I, and, um, so I recommend that to folks. Um, one thing to keep your mind on, or keep in mind as well, is you don't want to necessarily tip your hand too soon. There's a fine line here where we go through and um, 
we're gathering information and well, we're gonna hit a point where we're gonna start can locking these people into an area and kicking them out of our systems. If we tip our hand and do it too quickly when we're not really ready and we don't know what they've really done around the environment, we let them know that we know that they're there and then all of a sudden you have potential where they can start to be destructive. And that's not something we don't, we want to have happen. Um, and always be ready to call for help. There's, you know, all of us usually are working on teams. We've got somebody to, to reach out to. Um, we know folks who have had more experience than us. I mean, I've got a lot of great experience, I think. Um, but when I run into things that I'm not sure of or whatever, I'll contact Danny and say, hey, have you done this recently? What do you think? How should I go about this? And not unusual for him to point out something that, uh, that would have been a mistake on my part. So you want to keep that uh, in the forefront of your mind. Don't let our ego get too far ahead of us uh, as we're trying to, oh, I got this. I'm going to show this guy. Eh, nothing wrong with talking a little bit uh, with the folks around us. So these are just some things, like I said, found this as part of doing penetration tests where we found that we'll do things like the AV exceptions and uploading tools or causing alerts to happen to get them to log in with elevated privileges. Things that they don't do when they're actually trying to find us, surprisingly never noticing that we're logged in via RDP. Uh, these are just some, some observations that I have from, from being the bad guy inside of somebody's environment and seeing where they, they have no idea we're there, even though we're fairly loud and obvious. Um, somebody who's really trying to hide, you know, is going to make it even more difficult. Um, any questions? No? Well, hope that was useful and interesting to you all, and uh, thanks for coming out.